This is my 3D printed remote control boat. Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Daniel here with the Armidale patrol boat from the Royal Australian Navy. So this video is going to be in four parts. First of all, I'll give some details on the boat where you can get the files and how much plastic you will need. Then I will take the camera and I will show you a close-up view of all the details on this boat. There's a lot of details. Then I'll remove the superstructure and I will show you the inside, the electronics that I chose to make this remote control. So this boat, you can get the files on CG Trader. It was designed by Burnco Models in Australia. There's a lot of work here and of course the files are not free. You have to pay for them. A lot of files. The instructions are top-notch. It's a PDF document of 100 pages showing sketches on where to put the parts together. So it's very well done. It's worth the money, in my opinion. Now, one thing to uh, mention here, uh, the files are for a boat that is 1 35th scale. That makes the ship six feet long and you need a, a big 3D printer to be able to print the parts. For example, a few of the parts here are uh, 12 inch by 12 inch, which is too big for my Ender 3 printer. So I had to reduce the scale to 1 48th that still gives me a boat that is 50 inches long or 1.3 uh, meters. So you have to reduce the files like I said and in doing so you'll run into problems because some pieces will become very thin and I had to add uh, plastic beams. So I will point out all the details when I show you uh, the boat. So it takes four spools of filament to print the boat. It's in sections, obviously, like the hold here is uh, seven sections that you glue and you bolt together. I chose gray because I didn't want to paint the inside. You can choose white, of course, but this is all gray, so the inside is uh, gray. So it takes exactly three spools, but you will need four because you will have some misprints. There is no doubt about that. Some parts you'll have to print twice. For example, this uh, superstructure piece here, which is this one right here. I had to print twice because I got a power failure in the middle of the night. So some parts will take up to 24 hours to print. So if you have a misprint like I did here, keep it because you can use it to test uh, color, to test your paint, masking tape also like I did here. You can even uh, test glue. So keep that. So the uh, color is almost exactly the colors of the real Armadale ship in Australia. I was able to find locally a gray, it's a kind of a gray, uh, greenish uh, gray. So, and the deck also is dark gray, painted the hull here black, and I use satin finish uh, at the end. So let me grab the camera and I will show you the details on the boat. Let's look at the back or the stern first. As you can see, there's a lot of details. I had to print a riser here. I'll explain that when I open the superstructure. Looking at the side here, I'm trying to go slowly. View of the, of the bridge with all the antennas. I didn't print here uh, three lights on each side because the posts are very small at this scale. So I may have to drill holes uh, for the posts to actually hold on the mast. So I'll, I'll keep that maybe for a project next uh, winter. And going ahead to the front. Here the antennas are really in the way when you move the ship. So I installed magnets as you can see here. And there is a magnet under the superstructure. So they just hold like that. Same thing with the front here. I did not glue the cannon. I printed a shaft uh, that goes underneath and I can motorize the cannon in the future. Here, uh, there's a little compartment. I'll explain that when we look at the inside and it's also on a magnet as you can see. So I, doesn't, I don't lose it in the lake. And uh, this is number 83. That's the Army Dales. So vinyl stickers with five coats of um, satin clear, so the water should not peel off the, uh, the numbers. Now let's go back uh, to the back. I want to show you the underneath of the, of the stern. Now looking at the details uh, at the stern, we have number 83 here also. Uh, two rudders, two props. They are 30 millimeters in diameter. I got them from Duckyard Models in the UK. 
For the build, I used um, one quarter inch brass tubing here, and I had to modify the insert here to make uh, the hole a bit bigger for that. And it's an M4 stainless steel rod for the, the prop. And here it's brass rods for the rudders. Also, I did not glue the roof of the bridge so that we can see the details inside. You can see here all the computers. Uh, so it holds with the magnets as you can see here. So if I was to build that ship again, I would add plastic on the sides here to put the magnets over there instead of putting the magnets on the computer desks. Now I remove the superstructure so we can see inside. So here is the rudder assembly. I had the high torque servo from Hobby King and I wanted to use it. I installed it vertical because I wanted to have easy access to those screws here. So because of that, it's a little high. But at the same time, you want here the tubes to be as high as possible above the water line to minimize the water leakage inside this compartment. So to clear the screw, I had to build a riser as you can see. You can see here also the Burnco uh, logo. So this is the riser I had to print to clear the screw over here. Also, I did not install the mast at the back simply because I want to put wires in the future to have lights. So that will be my next project next uh, winter. Here in this section, I have uh, insulation pipes for flotation. I don't want to lose this boat at the bottom of the lake if there is a problem. We can see here two of the beams I had to print and we can see this one at least that I had to print to uh, reinforce the deck over here and again because of the scale reduction this became too uh, thin now we can see here the stuffing box brass we can see the rod stainless steel and these are my mortars they are uh, brushed they are Turnigy uh, 550 from uh, Hobby King you can see here I printed also two posts to keep the cables out of the bottom. I don't like the idea of having cables where potentially I can have the water. I could have run the cable under the deck here, but I am using uh, plastic here. And there is one piece that I don't show here. And this is to collect uh, any possible oil or, um, or grease uh, during rotation. So I don't want to dirty the inside of my boat. So I thought I could damage the wire. So that's why I build this year. Uh, one advice here is not to glue them but to use double-sided tape so that when you work and you hit them they don't break and a good tape to use for that I want to show that here is double-sided tape but rubber so they are flexible like I just demonstrated. Now here I built a uh, or I printed a plate to hold the ESC. This is a hobby wing let me uh, show you the box here. It's a hobby wing 860 the good thing about this uh, ESC is that it's a double or a dual output. So with one ESC, I can control the two motors. So this, this makes a very clean installation. And I have an orange uh, 7 channel. 7 because not very much expensive. I mean, not a lot more than 5 channels. And I can add lights and I can have also a servo to motorize the cannon in the front. Here I put the insulation as you can see here on the side. I have here also a plate that I printed for the battery. The way distribution is good as is, those motors, uh, motors are heavy and I needed also some weight in the front so I have the battery in the front. Now here because it's difficult to print with the right angle, I use double sided tape here and not glue and the tape for that I recommend this tape, it's a framing double sided tape as you can see it's very thick, it's a foam. So that will fill the gap if the angle on your plate doesn't match perfectly the angle of the hole. Now you can see here one section bolted and here for the glue I needed something that will also seal the, the joint. So I used tester glue for that. So tester cement, plastic cement. So this is a good, uh, a good fit for that. For other parts I use Gorilla Super Glue or AC uh, Glue. The original boat has also side the thrusters, but I did not install any in this build, so I just put plastic here to uh, to block the area, so I don't get don't get any leakage. But I kept this compartment uh, open here in case I want to add there uh, something there in the uh, in the future. And you can see the uh, thrusters here; they were right here. Let me. I'm trying to show over here with the shade. Yeah, right there. 
we can see I put plastic to shield that in the in the 3d model uh, software but I left here as you can see about one millimeter so that we can see where the thrusters would be in the real ship I want to show you what I did under the superstructure so this is the shaft that I printed to motorize eventually the front uh, cannon these insulation pipes are glued but uh, for more safety here, I also printed brackets as you can see and I put elastics So if for any reason this part gets disconnected from the ship I will not lose it at the bottom of the lake and this is the uh, the rear here of the superstructure We can see here the beams I added here You can see on the side to make that part a little bit more solid and also here right here in the middle between the foam We can see I added here a beam again to make that piece a little uh, thicker so this is the uh, inside and uh, if you have any questions just uh, ask me in the comments below and I'll be happy to uh, help you and again I use the uh, three types of glues for this I use the tester cements I use uh, Gorilla super glue and also uh, AC uh, glue so um, I'm going now to show a few pictures I took during the build and um, thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you soon on my channel this is a great ship and I'm quite happy with the results. Goodbye, guys.